there's a new strategic development at the University of Oxford which is looking to combine developmental biology and regenerative medicine and actually put that into a purpose-built building. The Institute will be um, known as the Institute of Developmental and Regenerative Medicine. The idea is that it will be three floors and it will combine um, cardiovascular with neuroscience and immunology. There isn't an institute that flags up the paradigm of studying embryology and developmental biology as underpinning strategies in regenerative medicine and that really brings us together and merges those two disciplines in what will be a flagship institute. What will be unique about the institute is that we will then use this knowledge from the development of the organs um, to harness programs to regenerate defective or absent tissue to replace lost function. I do believe that bringing together these disciplines under one roof could help also be the translation of these results. So uh, these basic developmental mechanisms would have implications in uh, regenerative uh, medicine. This is a growing area. Regenerative medicine is an extremely important avenue in terms of um, potential impact on disease and tissue injury and damage. And the idea then is that we will have a means to continue the work that we're doing and in fact push on in terms of capturing funding, having a clearly a flagship institute which will attract further leverage of money to take the BHF investment that's currently up to 2017 forward. We are very confident that over time our contributions to the field of regenerative medicine will make a difference. So I'm very excited about the possibilities we have to link these disciplines together. Without the public support through the British Heart Foundation for this initiative, the building will not happen. So we really need the support of the public, potential donation and funds that might help us with the capital cost for the building. We need to take that forward beyond the building itself. We really need new recruitment, the best young brilliant minds to come to this institute and for us to achieve our scientific goals. All of that cannot be done without support from the public at large. And that research is extremely um, cutting edge in the sense that we believe it will take us forward into treatment. So I think that you know, within a conservative decade, maybe even less, perhaps five years, we could be moving towards treating human patients along the lines that we're suggesting by our understanding of how the heart is put together in the first place. Anybody who will be donating to the Institute or potentially buying into this will be buying into a legacy of future treatment based on our understanding of how the heart forms and we can extrapolate that to human patients.